Parenthood is without doubt one of the most blissful experiences of life. Thanks to advancements in medical science, several tests are now available to screen and diagnose the chromosomal and genetic abnormalities at the embryo stage. Dr. Gautam Alabadia, who had earlier spoken about IVF on my show, will today throw some light on this exciting new prospect of medical science. Well, last time we discussed IVF extensively and today we are discussing something associated with IBF and it's very interesting for me to know more about it, how much is happening in that field. My first question is, how is IBF and genetics coming together to really make a difference in the world of having babies? Actually, IBF is now going to be more of genetics in the years to come. For the listeners who haven't caught up with the last episode, uh, let me explain what is IVF. Right. IVF is in vitro fertilization. In vitro means outside the body. Fertilization is mm -hmm. fertilization of the egg and sperm, giving rise to a small baby, which is in medical terms called an embryo. What we are going to talk today is what happens after this embryo is formed. Caught. And that is the basis of how genetics has helped improve the results of IVF. Correct. So we will discuss this in two parts. Mm -hmm. The first is a medical term called pre-implantation genetic screening mm -hmm. or PGS. Okay. Basically this is the screening of embryos. Mm -hmm. Day three or day five embryos. Embryos three days of life and five days, five of, days life. of life. So we screen the embryos by taking a few cells with the procedure called embryo biopsy. Okay. This is the clip that you are seeing on the screen is of a day three biopsy. It's mm -hmm. a three day old embryo mm -hmm. where the embryologist in the lab with a laser is creating a hole in the outer shell of the embryo. Mm -hmm. And now as you see the screen gently prizing one cell out mm -hmm. and once they suck the cell out as it is seen on the screen, mm -hmm. this cell or a couple of cells are then sent for genetic analysis. Okay. This genetic analysis essentially is a all 24 pair analysis. That means it screens your entire chromosomal complement. It tells you if all your chromosomes are normal, including your sex chromosomes. Okay. So it's really a revolution, revolution and this method is called complete chromosomal screening by NGS or next generation sequencing. So there are women who have undergone multiple abortions, like Correct. four abortions, five abortions, they check and everything seems normal. Mm. Still these ladies keep on having miscarriages or abortions. One after the other, yes. So one of the reasons now that has been found out is that nature does not allow abnormal babies to stick to the uterus mm -hmm. and if nature detects that a baby is chromosomally abnormal it doesn't allow it to be shed and it goes down as an abortion or miscarriage mm -hmm. with this new technology pre-implantation genetic screening using IVF mm -hmm. we make these embryos outside of this woman who is suffering or has repeated miscarriages we do a biopsy on day three or day five. Mm. We send one or a few cells for genetic analysis. So supposing we have seven embryos, we send each of them each for of analysis them. Mm -hmm. and out of them only one is normal. The other six are abnormal. We don't transfer the abnormal okay. ones. Mm -hmm. When we transfer the normal one, we have a 70% chance that this embryo will stick to the uterus. Mm. And once it sticks, it will go to term. Mm. So. It's like a miraculous cure for Absolutely. women undergoing miscarriages where mm -hmm. now you are very sure you have transferred a chromosomally normal baby so you are not even bothered about how is the baby going to have any defects etc. This is just the major concern we all have when you know we are pregnant. So today we have PGS or pre-implantation genetic screening available at the Aster IVF here. Mm -hmm. It does it helps two groups of patients, mm -hmm. one who have had previous multiple IVF failures or long-standing infertility and the other is a group with multiple abortions or miscarriages. We used to hear stories about with assisted reproduction you have multiple pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Today we transfer only one chromosomally normal baby 
and that sticks 70-80% is the success rates. So this screening actually has revolutionized the whole process. Yes, it has increased success rates, it has helped us treat these women where we had no idea why they are repeatedly having abortions. We talked about a day three biopsy and a day five biopsy. That means biopsying or taking some cells for genetic analysis on a day three embryo that you saw in the beginning of the show. And what you are seeing on the screen now is an advancement. It's uh, a day five biopsy. It's a five day old embryo, mm. which you can see on the screen how we are removing a portion called trophectoderm, a few cells from the trophectoderm. This was done because we found out that there is a process called mosaicism. That means on day three when we take a biopsy, mm -hmm. sometimes you have abnormal results, but in the same embryo as it grows to day five, nature corrects this and makes abnormal babies normal. Wow. That means nature throws out the abnormal it's cells abnormal. and corrects it. So today we are now shifted over, the world is shifting over to a trophectoderm or day five biopsy where you get very little mosaicism and you get more accurate results. Yes, and yes. this is for everything, for PGS as well as for PGD. Today a trophectoderm or a day five biopsy is preferred and that is the way forward and that is what we do at Aster IVF. Doctor, you spoke about PGS, but there's also a terminology uh, that has been used now is PGD. What is PGD all about? When genetics came into IVF, it was with PGD. PGD is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. diagnosis. Initially, it was used to diagnose hereditary disorders like, for example, thalassemia. Mm or severe muscular dystrophies or some other serious diseases where you don't want them getting transferred from the parents to the next generation. So they used to undergo IVF and only the normal embryos were selected for transfer. The abnormal embryos or the affected embryos carrying the gene that causes the disease like thalassemia or mm. Duchenne's muscular dystrophy were eliminated. So PGD initially came in to eliminate diseases from the next generation. Right. But then it went forward when we got next generation sequencing. We have now over 200 diseases that have been identified that can be screened, screened and normal embryos can be given. Mm. Today, even if we don't know if you don't have a usual disease, but you have a child with some very different form of muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. We can do a gene compatibility test under this PGD where we can take the blood from the father, blood from the mother. Mm -hmm. If there is an affected child in the family, we can take the blood and locate which gene causes or most probably causes this genetic disorder. And that gene can be? Yes, altered. once you localize that gene, you have the answer in the next set of embryos that are going to be used for IVF for this couple. You do not want that gene. gene. So you can eliminate the disease from the next generation. And PGD today has, you know, stretched further and has eliminated even sex-linked disorders. There mm. are diseases which are common only in women, mm. found in women. So you can eliminate it by just, you know, not transferring, you can uh, selected sex into mm. the next thing. Right. There is family balancing that has come in where today there are smaller families and people want to have just one or two mm. children. You can select when somebody wants only a girl in the mm. family. Mm. So. Here, the parents can opt using PGD to do a family balancing, balancing. and have only a girl child in the family. Mm -hmm. So this technology is becoming simpler mm -hmm. and the success rates are very high. So, you know, in excess of 70 to 80 percent success rates, you have PGD in IVF, which mm -hmm. has really changed the future of how we are looking at diseases. 
So, Doctor, as you said, there are a lot of new developments happening almost on a daily basis. So, what's new in this field? Actually, when we talk of PGS and PGD, what is now under research and will probably come into mainstream clinical medicine is uh, that you, we might not require to take biopsies of these cells on day three or day five. Okay. You have this blastocele cavity mm -hmm. seen on your screen on day five in a day five embryo. It's a fluid filled cavity. All that the embryologist will need to do is put in a needle and aspirate some fluid from this cavity and you have free floating DNA. That mm -hmm. means the DNA of the baby is also supposed to be shed in this fluid. So without a biopsy, we might get the entire chromosomal analysis from this free floating DNA. So the whole technique will become even more non-invasive and more less advanced. traumatic to the embryo. Wow, I mean, there's so much happening in this field. It looks like we can almost tailor make our babies in a few years time. Thank and you. doctors like you are really uh, giving lives to so many couples who are uh, struggling to have babies. I know a lot of people watch the last segment and this segment will help them even more. Thank you. Thank you. Oh